Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, hey, Calvary, thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. We are wrapping up the book of Colossians, looking at the last few verses here. And uh, what may seem like just a few kind of uh, housekeeping items and greetings here at the end of the book, I think actually gives us something really significant to look at. So let's uh, read this together. If you've got a Bible, you can pause this. Unlike a sermon at church, you can pause me and fast forward and rewind and do whatever you would like with those controls. Uh, But Colossians 4, starting uh, in verse 15, Paul says this. He says, Give my greetings to the brothers at Laodicea, to Nympha, and the church in her house. And when this letter is read among you, have it also read in the church of the Laodiceans. Uh, And see that you also read the letter from Laodicea. And say to Archippus, see that you fulfill the ministry that you've received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. Now, I want to go back to what he said in verse 16. He says, And when this letter has been read among you, have it also read in the church of the Laodiceans. There's not, he doesn't say if you read this letter in your church, but he says when you read this, and also pass it on to this other church and have it read that here in Scripture, we have an expectation communicated that we're reading Scripture. There's an expectation that this is something that is read. Now, of course, there's context here. He is writing an actual letter that is being sent to a church, expecting that to be written. But I think there's a broader context that applies to us, too, that there's an expectation that we're reading and applying God's Word to our life. And at Calvary, we say all the time, if you read and apply God's word, it will change your life. Because we believe that. But the first step is to actually take this book and open it and read it. And and I want to just kind of camp here for today's episode because uh, I was reading a recent Barna research study that showed among United States Christians, uh, 50% of them only read the Bible once or twice per year. Now, you're maybe expecting me to say once or twice per week or per month, but per year. Half of people who claim to be Christians in the United States, and I don't know all of where they're at with Jesus, there's, you know, it's just a number on a sheet from a survey, are only opening and reading this once or twice a year. Now, I'm thankful that they're doing that, obviously, but I believe we could all agree that out of 365 days in the year, two of them is not really an adequate amount of time to be reading the most important book that has ever been given to us in the history of mankind. This this book has been faithfully and diligently preserved and passed from generation to generation without flaw or error because God has worked through people to preserve his perfect and inerrant word. It has been faithfully translated without error in so many different languages because God cares about this and works to make that happen. There have been wars and fights and struggles over this book. And yet, in light of that, so many people are just letting it collect dust on a shelf. And in that same study, it said that only 34% of Christians read it once or twice a week. And my challenge to you if you claim that Jesus is your Savior and your Lord, is for that statistic to not be you. If you're watching this, let me challenge you to read God's Word. Let that be a daily habit that you develop in your life, that you're consistently getting in God's Word each and every day. And don't let this be something that if you're not in the habit of, you go, I'll start that next Monday. No, start it today. Not next week, not tomorrow, not at the beginning of the month because it's a nice place to start. No, start now. If you don't know where to start, let me challenge you to, to start in one of these suggestions. If you want to know more about Jesus, start in the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they start the New Testament. Uh, one of uh, my favorites to point people to is John. I love the perspective that he writes with some of the stories in there. are incredibly powerful to help you understand who Jesus is. You want to find how to have more joy in life? Well, tomorrow we start a series looking at the book of Philippians. This is often called the joy book of the New Testament, which is interesting since it's written from prison uh, by the Apostle Paul. You want to know more about what it means to, to live for Jesus and follow him and what faith is and how this all works? Read Romans. You want to learn more about how to have God's wisdom for your life? Then read a chapter of Proverbs every day. You want to feel how God understands the 
the, the highs and the lows that you experience in life, read the book of Psalms. Point is, pick somewhere and start. Read God's word, apply it, and see if it will change your life. Because the expectation is that it will be read among the churches, and I hope that among our church, it will be read by all. Have a great day, Calvary. Now go read your Bible.